I hope you're ready to put your thinking caps back on because we are part two of brushless motors. And what I'm going to talk about today is how they interact with the brushless motor controllers. While we're on the subject of motors, is there anything in particular that you would like to see me film on this subject? I hope your brains aren't too soggy from the last one. And I would actually like to talk about soggy throttle feel with this. And I, specifically, I just want to talk about the older tech versus newer tech for brushless motor speed controllers and how it interacts with the brushless motors. So in the past, pretty much my entire livelihood as a motor designer, I have tried to get motors that start up as slow as possible just that's my goal you got to get them to start up slow they need to interact with typically a castle esc in the way that a castle esc kind of bump starts the rotor there you know you, you've got to get going you, you need to break the initial attraction force of your magnets and your stator so your low speed control at least in the past has always been dependent on how easy it is to turn by hand and there's actually a term for this and it's called deaton force so the detent force of a motor is just how hard it is to turn the shaft by hand. My goal has always been to minimize that. But at the same time, when you minimize that, typically you lose your drag brake and you also lose torque density of the motor because you're essentially decoupling the magnetics from the stator. It's not always exactly the case, but in general, if I'm going to take one motor design and reduce the detent force, that's usually what my downside is. So. Moving forwards, we have different speed controllers out there, ones that are controlled with the AM32 protocol. And they have allowed us to change how we design motors, me in particular. So instead of going for the easiest, smoothest spinning motor, now what I've been going for is something that has a lot higher Deaton force. And instead of jump starting the rotor to get it spinning, we actually force it at a low RPM to start spinning until we get to a, a point where we're generating enough back EMF to jump into the typical sensorless mode that something like a Castle ESC would use. Best way to show you this is just to start them up. We're just gonna plug one in and we're gonna see what happens. I've got my trusty tachometer here and we're gonna see what the minimum RPM is. So we'll plug it in. These are sensorless brushless which means we can plug them in in any direction and they will just spin. And we will start with the castle. So we've got our motor speed controller, our motor. This is a servo tester, which mimics a motor, a radio, sorry. A lot of terms in my head right now. There we go. And then of course we need a battery. Let's get these parts out of the way so we can see what we're doing. Now this is actually a 10 pole end runner. It is a prototype that I'm working on, but the closest equivalent is going to be the Crawlmaster BL. There we go. So I'm going to start it up and with this ESC, it switches at an audible frequency and you'll be able to hear it trying to start up. I'll get closer so you can hear. It's trying. It's trying. There we go. She's rolling. Oh, no, no, it wasn't quite enough. There we go. So that's a steady RPM. One thing that I would notice is that if I pinch the shaft, it stalls and it stops. If I let it go, it spins again. So we're going to test this here. Try to get my hand out of the way so you can see the data that I am seeing. All right, about 300 RPM. It's going to jump around a little bit, but I know from experience that we're looking at about 300 RPM. This is an 1800 KB motor, and with this style of speed controller, this style of startup, we're going to see the lowest RPMs with lower KVs and with higher pole counts. So this is a pretty low RPM, or I'm sorry, pretty low KV, pretty high pole count. So we do actually get a low RPM, about 300, 296 if we want to be more exact, but about 300 RPM. Just for giggles, let's spin this all the way up. You may want to shield your ears. I may want to shield my ears. And just let's see how fast this spins. 31,000. I know my thumb's in the way there. 25. Let's see if we can get a good 
bead on what that is. 27, 21. All right, by knowing the KV, 21,000 should be about right. Oh, whoa. All right, sorry about that noise. 21,000 RPM, that should be about right. We're running 11 volts, 1800 KV, plus probably a bit of timing advance. There we are, we'll set that aside. Now, this is the Crawlmaster V2. This is an AM32 based ESC, 32 bits instead of eight bit. And you will see on startup that it, it works differently. So at this point, Really what's not limiting us, it's not so much the motors, it's actually the motor speed controllers. And we're talking about the technology, at least for crawling, the low speed control. Everything revolves around how good the speed controller works. All right, we're armed. I'm gonna get it spinning. There we go, it's spinning. That's probably minimum. Maybe you can visually tell that it's already spinning slower. Let's get my... Get my hand out of the way here. And just gotta get this into a reliable position. There we go. All right, 73 RPMs. 73.9, 74, 74 RPMs, much, much slower. And that's just the way that it starts it up. It essentially steps it as if it was a stepper motor. And it's not quite as efficient as the Castle startup, but at the same time, due to the 32 bit being a lot quicker, it tends to run as cool and sometimes cooler than what a Castle will on at least a high pole count. Four pole, Castle's got an edge. High pole count, these AM32s definitely have an edge. So now we're gonna spin it up Instead of hearing the frequency of the ESC through the motor now, we're actually hearing a bearing in this. The bearings need a little, they need a little more side load. It's a prototype motor. All right, we're gonna spin it up. Watch your ears. Not quite as bad. Still a lot of whine, but we're spinning a lot of RPMs. And we should see a very similar speed. 21,600 on this. There we go. So real close. You know, it's kind of jumping around. You got to make sure that it's reporting the actual RPM. But both ESCs, yoink. Both ESCs are pushing it about the same, but this one has a lot better low speed control. Oh, I also, I didn't show you what happens if you try to stall it out. All right, this is at very minimum speed. It, it won't stall. So it's not quite an RPM lock, but there is an anti-stall measure. And you know, I'll, I'll try to pinch here on the side where you can, since you can't hear what's going on like the castle, you can just try to see me try, I'm trying to stall it, but the RPM is unchanging at this point. And if I go a little faster, we get even more torque and I can't stall it out. And a lot of people do enjoy that RPM lock these days. I was very against it for a long time because you can't predict when your rig is getting into a bind and it's more likely that you're gonna break parts. But we can put, and I have put into these ESCs, a threshold to where once you hit a certain amperage, it'll actually roll back. And that is kind of like a secondary limiting. Instead of it being the torque of the motor and the startup of the motor that is your limit in feedback, it's actually the ESC and the motor stalling out in a different way that gives you that feedback. So a little different implementation of the same thing. But a lot of people really enjoy that RPM lock. You can essentially get driving at a much lower speed than an old school system. And it just kind of chugs right along. And y'all have seen this in my videos, or if you want to see it in my videos, there are tons and tons of videos, in particular the Bastard Junior. That one has an ESC like this with a motor like this, an Outrunner, and it just chugs right along. It doesn't care if it goes up into obstacles. It just keeps climbing and climbing as easy and predictable as you want. 
I think that might be enough information for, for this one, but essentially I wanted to show you how the interaction of ESC and motor now is as big of a deal as your selection of brushless motor and just kind of how those interact. So it's good to see the technology improving and that gives me something else to do with my job, which is designing motors that are the best for crawlers. If you do have any questions about them, leave them down below. We'll do our best to get to them. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Congratulations, your toilet viewing was successful. Hopefully you're done pooping by now, and if you're not, you should probably wrap it up. If there are any other topics you would like us to cover, leave your comments down below and make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well.